So YouTube, today I'm going to talk about one of my favourite languages, that's Makaton, a sign language for people with communication disorders. Um, I want to talk about some of the pitfalls that people can fall into when teaching Makaton. Um, this sign language is useful for all sorts of people, people with cerebral palsy, down syndrome, autism, normal toddlers, um, which is often neglected. Uh, you don't feel the need to teach sign language to ordinary children, but toddlers can actually learn to sign before they can learn to talk. So if you teach them, and they're a little bit less likely to have temper tantrums um, if they want something and they can't communicate it go down to scream their heads off so it's quickly not as well as it can. Um, one of the pitfalls I find working with autistic adults, some who use sign language, a problem is is um a lot of the signs they use aren't actually really very communicative. Um for instance it's signs like please or thank you, hello, goodbye, morning they're all useful um, in getting to know someone, but they're not really useful in getting what you want. Um, I work with one service user who signs please over and over and over, but never actually tells us or signs what they want. It, and perhaps because they've been taught that please is the magic word, maybe that's why they consider it so important. A lot of the people I work with only need their few signs. Um, we all know please, but it's not telling us what they want. It's fine to use signs like that when you're in conversation with these people. But if you're actually doing a communication session with them, if you're teaching them sign language, you've really got to leave signs like please, thank you, hello, goodbye, alone, because it's a waste of time. And remember, with severely retarded people, sometimes it can take a whole year's tuition just to learn one sign. You know, you can't afford to waste time on um, signs which are only for courtesy, not for getting things. Another pitfall is um, you may feel the need to play everything by the book to teach stage one math and then stage two, then stage three. But that's the wrong way to do it. You have to teach it uh, as in a way that the individual will pick up. Because so if you have a child who is very food fixated, obviously you're going to teach food faster. If a child already knows how to nod and shake your head, there's no need to teach the sign for yes and no because they you don't need two types of communication. Like if they can do it the normal way that other people can recognise then that best. In my opinion, the four most important signs are toilet, home, hungry, and pain the size position wherever the pain is. Um, now, why have I picked those four signs as the first four I would teach? Because if you're hungry or in pain or you need the loo uh, or you want to go back home and you can't say anything, um, those need, there's the things most likely to cause a temper tantrum from a mute person. So, those are the most important signs. Um, and the way, the way the, uh, Macaron vocabulary is structured is very bizarre. You've got Dal and Chapati, the sign for them, in stage two. So those signs are considered more important than school, stage four, or more important than pain, which is in stage nine. I mean, these are things that only a few families are going to know about. I think they've only been included to, um, for politically correct reasons. I think that's why they've been put so high up. So don't let yourself follow the order strictly. Now, I did some training once and I was told that with autistic, because they find abstract 
sports so difficult that Makaton was a bit wasn't really suitable. And I disagree because the song that my service users learn the most is Toilet, which is a very abstract song compared to things like Home, uh, House, and Food. So I really don't think abstraction is a problem for them. We're talking about severe autistic here. We can learn an abstract song. So I would suggest it more about whether they feel it's worth doing this. So if people don't respond to um, if people aren't signing themselves, they're not going to see any point. They'd rather just let. There are lots of rather silly signs as well. Um, you know, I just got confused between home and house then. That's the sign for home, which is a pretty ridiculous sign. Use house for home, that's much better. It's the shape of a roof, it's a very concrete sign. Um, another one, things like food and to eat. This one, hungry, rubbing your tummy, that's much better because that's something that an ordinary person would recognise, while this not so obvious to a lay person. Remember, unfortunately, very few people know sign language. They might, they, they, but they do use a lot of gestures which have been picked up by Macton. So try and teach them signs which most people will recognise. Another very silly sign is the one for computer. Uh, yep. Like that. Now, Mackerton was a sign language created in the 1970s. I think computers were a bit different then. Um, but I would suggest do a keyboard sign. Okay. Yes, you might confuse that with piano, but I think most children and young adults are more likely to be asking for a computer than a piano somehow. Um, and of course, a sign like that, that computer sign, might have been fine in the 1970s. Similarly, signs do go obsolete, like the sign for biscuit. Uh, that's from when we used to break biscuits on your elbow to get rid, to get rid of the weevils and the maggots. Now, that's not very... Um, now it's become a rather abstract sign. Although, once again, that one is picked up almost as much as toilet. In fact, uh, yeah, home biscuit and toilet are the signs that my service users learn the most. Um, and of course... Signs like CD, video recorder, stereo, radio, because these things are being cannibalised by the internet, you know, I wouldn't bother too much with them. They'll quickly become obsolete. Okay, hope that's helped, and I'll see you later. Bye, YouTube.